Live, 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 live. We're live now. What's up, guys? This is Keith Kelfus with the Untrapped Podcast with Patrick Clark from Sales Boost. He has a soft washing, pressure washing, roof cleaning, concrete cleaning company in, I think, North Carolina. You're in a bunch of different states and locations. You've built a multi million dollar empire that's automated, systematized. You're also a business coach and you have your own live events that sell out called Sales Boost where you teach people how to increase the sales and marketing, make more money in their service business. And you're very, very humble. And I had the honor, the honor (laughs) at one of the conquer events. I sat at your table. I'm like, who's this Patrick Clark guy? I never met him in my life. And I just, excuse me, hung out. Then I found myself taking notes and learned a bunch of amazing stuff from you. You're so awesome. What's up, Patrick Clark? What is up, Keith? Hey, appreciate you having me on, man. This is awesome. So let's jump right into it. Real quick, I do want to say if you're listening to this on the Untrapped podcast on Apple or Spotify, awesome, or the Untrapped podcast YouTube channel on YouTube, this is Patrick Clark. Let's jump right into it and talk about how to boost the sales in your business and the entire mindset behind all this, bro. What's up? What is up, man? Yeah, dude, I'm stoked. So yeah, you're right on. Our corporate location, though, is in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, We do have a location in North Carolina. We have nine locations in eight different states. So we're in eight different states right now, which is super amazing. Um, We're going to be adding five more locations on this year. Um, So a lot going on. As you know, um, we also have gutter butter for my kids. So it's gutter butters, the oxidation removal cleaner, if you will, that gets the oxidation off of gutter. So they're actually uh, signing on new vendors as we speak. So you're the you're the founder of gutter butter. Yes. If all you guys, if you uh, most people that watch my stuff are landscapers, it's also a lot of window cleaners and some soft wash power wash guys. It's the the pre spray soap that they spray on the houses and the siding and everything called gutter butter. That basically is what is it got bleach in it or what is it? So gutter butter is just a degreaser. It's only for the oxidation. So you get oxidation now on like, you know, vinyl siding where it gets chalky. So gutter butter is just for that. It is not the surfactant though for soft washing or for windows. It's a, it's basically a dedicated um, oxidation remover for the tiger stripes on the white gutters. Ah, So they're right there. The first thing I think of is your head is going efficiency. How can I be more efficient? Yes. So what is it that you do, man? You've built your service business and then now you're contributing and giving and helping tons of others. What is it that you do? Yeah. So with sales boost, so we basically, when we launched our, our first uh, licensee, if you will, up in New York, um, we started sales boost where they would come down to corporate and we would teach them new things like innovative sales, like meeting, meeting with customers, um, scheduling, dispatching, Um, anything to do basically with, you know, service based company in any industry, really, we just happen to do it in exterior cleaning, but we teach the sales, the processes, the 19 points to a sale. Like when you get to a house, what do you do? Right. Like getting everything out of your head, but in a system that they can execute on and anybody can do it. Like my 15 year old son can go run a, a quote, right. Whether it's, you know, horticulture, if it's a tree care company, we have our steps to run the quote. And so they would come and it started growing. Right. I opened it up to the public about two years later. Um, And so we had like 30 people come to our like first one. Um, And so that was in 2014. So we've been doing it now for six years and uh, it's been growing every year. We had what, like 130 people, I think. One second. I, I literally just got done with Monday quotes and rushed here into the studio live with you. I mean, I literally just got off a quote. I sold a job for two thousand eight hundred and fifty bucks landscape and I did not have 19 points that I hit. I mean, I understand how to create a rapport with the customer, establish a trust, find out exactly what they want and serve their needs. But a lot of this is verbal and linguistic and it's something that's unique and proprietary to me and what I practice. But You've been able to pull this out of yourself and systematize it so you can give it to somebody else who does sales. Like, what do you mean 19 steps? Yeah. So we have 19 steps written out. We have a whole binder uh, full of things, which is like right here. We have our buyer's guide. So we have a little a binder that we give you at Sales Boost that has everything in there. I'm not going to show you every little sneak peek, but it's a whole binder. So with our 19 points to a sale, you have to know five things 
five things before you even get a one foot on the property that you're going to build trust with five things before he's like, I'm going to write this down. So yeah, there's five things that you need to look at, right? Whether it's the sports car in the driveway, if it's the, you know, rivalry team, if you will, um, sports team, if it's, uh, you know, fishing, if it's golfing, how are you going to associate right off the bat five things that you can think of that you can relate with with the customer, right? So that's number one. Number two is where do you park your vehicle? Now, I'm like basics, right? Like 19 points is like, where do you park your vehicle? Do you pull it in the driveway? Do you park on the road? Um, these are things that I want you guys to ask yourself. So I've been doing sales for over 17 years now, and I ask the customer why they bought from me, right? Why they buy from us um, today. And I want to better my sales every time I do a quote. And I tell myself when I'm done, did I serve the, cu the customer at a high level, right? Did, they, did their uh, customer roadmap go as to plan? Because, you know, when you're doing sales, you a lot said of said customer roadmap. Yes. That's a, that's an entire, like a reframe. All right, keep going. <laughs> yeah. So we have that all drawn out. Right. And so, um, we're looking at, you know, are we serving the client at a high level? Right. They, we need to make sure that they're having their journey and their happiness level is very high. Right. So we're looking at their happiness level on our roadmap. And so, there's a lot that goes into it. So I'm going to, I won't get into all the details, but you know, when I started asking the customers why they bought from me, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? Right. They give you buying signals all the time. So buying you, signals, buying signals. Correct. So they will give you buying signals all the time, but are you picking up on those? And I'll be honest, a lot of, you know, business owners that are doing sales, you're not, you're thinking about, okay, how am I going to get the job done? How am I going to deposit the check? I got to do my QuickBooks and you're not, you're not paying attention, right? You're, you're actually looking at the next word you're going to say and not listening to the customer. So think about that. You're thinking about what you need to say, right? And you're not listening to the customer. And so with the steps, it guides you through this process, right? With the homeowner to make sure that you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's. And so, again, back to the five things. So you got five things that you're going to relate with them, okay? Then we get to the front door, and you have to think, do we knock or do we ring the doorbell? Well, think about it. Friends knock, strangers ring the doorbell, so we always knock. Then, once you get the homeowner there, you have a company portfolio. And again, you need to be sending out your buyer's guide. So here's our buyer's guide that we send out before our reps even show up on the, the job site, right? For the quote, they send the ask the seal badge. They already know how many kids I have, what I like to do on the weekends. Like we send that out prior um, to a quote. So right. then when you said ask the seal, some people are like, what can you just say what that is? So people who yeah, don't know. So they actually changed the name. It's called the seal now. So it used to be ask the seal, but the seal is a seven year background check. You get a, an ID badge. They run the background checks on all your staff and it's a seven year background check. It's a third party company that vets everybody in your company uh, to make sure that there's no criminals, sex offenders and so on. And so when they go and they show up, they're already getting that background. Uh, the customer is on your staff that's coming to their property. So you're already vetted by a third and then party. Does your staff have like a little ID badge or, and I yes. know they send it in the email too. It'll say approved by the seal, show a picture like John is showing up today. He'll be working on your property. And then. Yes. And then they have their badge. You know what I mean? If they ask for it, they always got them on pinned on. Um, so they know who's coming to the door and they're like, John, come on in. Would you like some sweet tea? You know, we're in, we're in the South. So they're going to be giving us some sweet tea, but that's how we get into the house. Right. Then we have our company portfolio. Our company portfolio is what we call our anchor to get to the kitchen table. So we give that to them. And I say, look, you know, we're going to walk around the property real quick. Show us what you're looking at getting done. And so we want them to tell us. A lot of times, you know, as you know, window cleaners, we're like, you know, would you like to get your gutters done too? Would you, you know, would you like this? You try to cross out but you're shooting yourself in the foot. Never ask because the first thing they're going to say is Keith. They're going to be like, no, I don't want that done right now. I just want my windows. 
and you don't want to offend them, right? Offend them by quoting other things. So you already shot yourself in the foot if you're like, Keith, you know, I saw that you got your gutters are bad, man. Is it okay if I give you a quote on those? You're like, nah, my wife just wants to get the windows done right now. So now you can't quote it. Do it anyway, right? So don't ask, just do. And that comes from Top Gun. Don't think, just do. That's the system. So what we do is we go around the property. We say, so, you know, are, are you looking at getting this done today? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not ready to get this done today. Okay, well, how soon were you looking at getting it done? And they're like, well, I want to get three quotes. Well, we always give everybody three quotes. We always give them three quotes. A, B, and C packages. Which one would you like to go with now, right? That's later on, though. I'm getting ahead of myself. And so we walk around the property. We kind of, you know, go over, you know, their house is changing color on them. It's turning green, whatever it may be. And, you you know, you talk about them. You, you know, usually I don't even talk about the cleaning as much. I'm talking about the garden. I'm talking about, you know, the cars, the golf course that they live on, the neighborhood, their beautiful estate, right, whatever that may be. And so we're just building rapport. And then I say, oh, by the way, I noticed you work at BMW. I was like, I have a list of five BMW um work, um, you know, employees, if you will, team members that we've done work, work for the last couple months. Would you like to, you know, have that list so you can call them and see what a great job we did? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they did. So we have BMW, we have Michelin and we have, uh, sheets, if you will, of, con of people that we, we call it the 101, uh, reference list and we have references. So by the time, you know, we're all done with our thing, you know, we're closing the deal, but all right, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. So now we're walking around the home. Um, we get back. To You're the giving me a panic attack, bro. Just keep going. All right, all right. So we get back to the door. I'm like, Keith, yo, I really appreciate you walking around the house with me. Which door would you like me to come in? I'm going to grab my measurements and everything and get you the, the packages. Which door would you like me to come through? The front or the back door? Front door. Front door, perfect. All right, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go run back to the car. I'm going to grab my measuring wheel. I'm going to take some measurements and everything. And then I'm going to get you your um, quote. Does that sound good? It's probably 15 minutes on a bad day. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, here's my portfolio, Keith. Go ahead and look through that. You know, take your time. And like I said, it'll be 15 minutes on a bad day. I'll be right back. Okay. Bam. So what did I just do? You don't even know what I just did. No. What did you do? I just told you I'm coming inside your home through the front door. Okay. So now you know I'm coming to the kitchen table to close the deal. Oh, you're coming right down to the kitchen table to close the deal and get a signature, a deposit, or pay whatever right there. Right then and there. Yes. So I, I just left that little nugget in your head that I asked you what door would up am I coming through, right? So that's in your head now. You said front door. Great. So now I'm gonna go back out. I'm gonna go around, take my measurements, take my pictures, you know, notate, and I'm doing a free inspection. And I think this is key, free inspecting, <laughs> right? So I'm looking at the downspouts. I'm making sure the drains are connected. If they're not, I'll connect them real quick. I'm taking measurements. I'm looking at the shingles, right? Is there a nail pop? Whatever it may be. We're going to do a free inspection for the homeowner. We're adding value. How can you add value? You want to stack the value. All right. So we're going to do that, free inspection. <laughs> And then we get all the measurements and I go back to the car. And I re and the reason I do this is never want to do measurements. You never want to do math in front of the customer because you're going to be shaking. You're going to be scared. You'll be like, oh, my goodness, it's a nine. You know what I mean? And so I've trained a lot of territory managers before and they get scared. So we go back to the car and we take our measurements. We have a, a actual um, sheet that is our pre-inspection sheet. That's where we make our doodles and all that stuff. Pre-inspection sheet. Now, you can actually attach this to your CRM and have it built into your CRM if you want. We do it on paper, but I like it because we do it all. We do all the math and everything, and it tells us, does the gutters have covers? Yes or no. Does the house have oxidation? Yes or no. Are the seals broken on the windows? Yes or no. It reminds them to do all the things because there's so much. Let if me just... Some people watching, know that I just need to shut my business down for three months and get all this <laughs> shit figured out. Because... The average guy who's stage one, stage two, chucking a trucker, got a couple employees. He's like, I got to go. I got the guys back at the job site, or I got eight more quotes lined up. I don't, I don't have time for all of this. Yes. How do you transition into doing a little bit more of this 
Because if I let you, do, I would keep, I'd let's fill up a whole notebook. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's go. Right. But, and this is why I do sales boost on site too. So I actually go out to businesses. I did 14 locations last year and I want, I go out and I put all these systems in place and I actually sell for you on day two. So we'll go out in the field and we'll sell for you and I'll do all the, the processes and show you and teach you. That's more done for you where sales boost is, you know, done with you, if you will. All right. So let's keep rolling. So. You know, we, we're crunching all the numbers in the vehicle. So we, we have our pre-inspection sheet and then boom, now we now we put it in our CRM. We're going to go ahead and put all the numbers in our CRM with our three packages. You guys can use Responsibid if you want. You could do it on paper, however you want. A little shout out to Responsibid. But uh, Responsibid has a great CRM where you can build out three packages and you can print it out right there in the car. Oh, I didn't even know that. I have, I have responsibility and I use it. Is this, how long have they had this feature? It's probably six months, maybe. Okay. If you guys want to try out responsibility, go to keithkelfus.com slash resources, scroll there down, you'll see responsibility and then try it out. Bam. And then there you Patrick go. Clark sales boost. People can find you on Facebook. Where else? Yeah. Instagram. Um, go to patclark.com. Uh, check us out there with all of my resources as well on patclark.com. Okay. All right. Now keep going. This is right. good. So with responsibility, right? You put together. Now there is a science and we teach you, it's called, we call it, um, oh man, catch a tiger by the toe. Uh, if he hollers, let him go. Right. So there's a science to making your packages and it's, you know, it always used to be good, better, best. Right. And we teach you the opposite. We break the customer's brain. We call it bilimbic selling. It's the back of your brain. And we teach you that in sales booth. So I'm not going to go into that. That's a lot. There's a lot of stuff in there. But we teach you how to write the packages. And there's a science behind it where it's good, better, best. But we go best, better, good. And it's a whole science, but it best, better, good. Um, and so it usually goes, you know, $1,200, $1,800, $2,400. And then we have a retail total. So we, we call them. It's like punch them and you hug them, hug them, hug them. And so. Again, we teach this class. I know you're going to be like, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> what is this catch a tiger by a toe? But there's a science to the packages. You can write packages, but if you're closing, you know, we have A, B, and C. My territory manager started closing D packages. They're like, no, I don't want that. Well, if they don't want it, you're not listening to the customer, number one. And so you're going to write a lot of D packages. So we track everything through Flock, and it's F-L-O-C-K. And in Flock, I can go in here and I have all our locations, but I'm going to go to the Precision Pro Wash branch and we'll go into our Sales Boost channel. And you can see like in Flock, these are all our channels. So we're going to go into the Sales Boost channel real quick. And in the Sales Boost channel, you can actually see all the closed deals. So we have a, can you see that okay or no? Uh, yeah, I can, a little I can bit, see. Right? Yeah, there you go. Just there. close, just close. Seven seventy one, three ninety nine. Yeah. All right, sweet. Twenty grand. over twenty grand last week in sales. Nice. So the cool thing is with with Flock, everybody's pumping them up. They're giving them pounds. You know what I mean? All that stuff um, in there. But again, this is down to a science with the packages because you have to write them the correct way. So A is what the customer asked for, but with no less than our $450 minimum. So if you're doing just windows, you know what I mean? There's $450 minimum. You're like, crap, dude, I can't get that, right? Like that's in your head. I can't get that. You don't know what you can get. I go to markets. Wait, just window cleaning is $450 minimum. Do you go inside of the house to clean the windows? I don't. No, we don't. Okay, because we discontinued interior window cleaning, except for just uh, our favorite customers that grandfathered in as the only ones. And Smart. then, so we have a new $250 minimum for any exterior only and a $500 minimum to go inside of anybody's house to do inside window cleaning. <sighs> it's But yeah. it's because we also have landscaping and all this other stuff. If we were, if we were just sure. window cleaning alone, I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. But, but uh, so... What are your core list of services? And when you sell these customers, like what is your core thing? Are you trying to sell packages to every customer? How does it work if they're like, well, can you come back in a couple of months and just do the gutters? How do you yeah. calculate? All Great question. So we do, we sell packages to every customer, right? And so we have a minimum, but once there's, excuse me, once they're a customer, there is no minimum. 
So we do maintenance contracts and we'll come back out for those gutters um, as well, right? So if they're 320 bucks for doing the gutters, we're going to come back out in a month or so to do them. So once they're a customer, there's no minimum. And we call it piggybacking. So our guys have to get $2,000 done in a, in a day. So they do their $2,000 and then they tack on the gutters or they tack on the back patio or the pool deck. And we call it piggybacking. So the guys have to get their two grand for the day and then they can do whatever else. And they can upsell too, right? That we want them to upsell. And so we'll do the three different packages. So A is what the customer asked for. B is what I think as a professional, this is like, you know. Wait, the, you got your sales guys selling two grand per day per crew, per truck? Yeah. Sometimes more. What I mean, that, that to me, it sounds like historically from all the different service companies that I've talked to that are doing uh, maintenance, cleaning, uh, a pressure washing, soft washing, window cleaning, stuff like that. That mm -hmm. seems like really, really good to be able to do something like that in a, uh, what is it, an eight hour day or something? Yeah, How? eight hour day. Yeah. Now, so, sometimes we work a little bit more, right? You guys um, must be doing roof cleaning too? Yeah, we do roofs. Yeah, so my list is roof cleaning, everything exterior. So roof, gutters in and out, windows, driveway, decks, you know, patios. What's your average ticket per job? Uh, 1400 Ah, Isn't yeah. it because you guys have this sales process and you're selling packages? Uh, yep. For wow. sure. Yeah, so we're, we're – and we can get this higher. I run the numbers and stuff. And we can get it higher. So and that, that is the, I hate to say it, but we're thinking small. Our industry is thinking a little bit small. We can get more. We are breaking the barriers. We're pushing the limits. I give my new sales guy, I'll go up 10% every week. And we'll go up 30% on our prices until we get bought back. You don't know what the cap is in your area. You just We're just going off of, oh, well, I can only get 15 cents a square foot. Or, you know, I can only get $8 a window, you know, whatever it may be, right? You guys need to check your markets and see what you can get. I want to do less work for more money because guess what? My customer roadmap, the happiness level goes up every time. And you're going to get a loyal customer that's with you over and over and over again because there's maintenance contracts. Man, you got my brain spinning right now. Yeah. Yeah. You should see some of the average tickets that the guys that come out of sales boost It's pretty good. Like they're having bet the best weeks they've ever had. After but you're sales. showing these guys in, in your program, you're showing them proof and stats and real numbers and building their belief. They walk I, out with belief. Correct. I brought one of our customers to sales boost that we do over $500,000 with a year and it blew their minds. It was amazing. Bro. Yeah, it was good. But again, so we go back to the, the principles, right? Like you want to bundle, you want a package. Don't just go out there for one service. Um, if they're a customer, then you can go out for one service, right? But you're piggybacking it at the end of the day. You're like, Mrs. Smith, I just want to let you know we have two jobs in front of you. We're going to piggyback the smaller jobs so we can get you in. How's Thursday sound for you? Right? And they're like, perfect. They're already a customer. And you get the big tickets done earlier. So we usually do our, you know, $1,400 ticket in the morning. Then we do another $1,000 in the afternoon. And then we piggyback. Mm. Yep. And we're always there. Eight o'clock. So the morning. way you're doing this much per truck and all that is you must be, well, you got the sales all dialed in. You got, what about, tell me about your process and workflow. Like how does your, your production, like is, are the trucks exactly the same? You got the, the chemicals, the, the reels, everything is like systematized. As soon as they pull up, they're jumping out working there. Or what are they doing? How does this? Yep. Hey, remember the 19 points to a sale? We got our yeah. 19, 19 steps to a, a clean house. So with that being said, all our trucks, I say you have to build it like McDonald's, but run it like Chick-fil-A. All our trucks are color coded. They're numbered and they are the exact, I wouldn't say they're the exact same, but they're really close. And all the backs of our truck, we developed a system in the back of the truck that everything has a spot. They have a toolbox. Everything's labeled in the toolbox. Um, every Friday, 
is inspection day. So we take everything out. We inspect everything. We make sure everything's there. If it's missing, we'll pull it out of inventory and then we charge the technician for it. If it's negligence, if it's not, then, you know, we replace it because things wear and we understand that. And so, yes, everything's a system. We're a cleaning company and the trucks have to be cleaned. Um, you know, it's crazy. As you speak this and I'm writing, mm -hmm. I feel my, my arm where I'm writing feels a little weak. I feel a little nervous because as I'm writing it, I feel the accountability flowing up mm. through me. And I feel like, cause you have, you, so if you're setting the example for your business, you gotta be that, um, you gotta cross every T and dot every day. I and do it yourself every single time. You can't let yourself off the hook. So this comes back to being able to lead yourself. W tell me a little bit about that, that journey to be that structured and have that level of self-discipline. Where yeah. do you get it so, from? So, so the crazy thing is I was never structured. I grew up in a trailer park. I had, you know, I could do whatever I want. I got in trouble a lot. So when I went to college, they had demerit system, right? So like if your hair touched your ear, you got a demerit. If your pants had a squiggly thing and touched the ground, you got a demerit. So it's a little bit more structured. I almost got kicked out of college, but it was still good, right? But I realized as a business owner, we don't do everything 100% because we can't. It's 20% in production. It's 20% in sales. It's 20% in marketing. It's 20%. And you can only do that. So I had to hire people. I had to hire people that were better than me, that would hold the team accountable better than me. Because as an owner, you're going to go out there and you'll be like, I don't need to do the checklist. I already know all this stuff. Right? <laughs> I already know it. And you're not going to follow the system. And then you're going to train the next guy to not follow the system. So you have to hire that person that is better than you, right? That can lead your team. Or you say, I have to do the 19 points to a clean house. Or I got to do the inspection on the truck. You have to do it. So I literally had to give myself a job description. And I do this when I go out to people's uh, offices. I literally give them a job description. I said, all right, here's three job descriptions because that's what you're doing right now. And you have to do them, right? Because we'll get out there and say, well, I don't need to set up the cones or I don't need to do that, right? No, you have to do it. You have to lead by example. And that's really, really important. It's hard, but you have to do it. And that's where the checks and balances kind of came in place, right? Is we have to do it this way. And I had to teach my team how I wanted it done. Now, there is some, some variance there because everybody does it a little bit different. And I teach that like in my scripts and stuff, make it your own, right? Make it your own. And if you find a better way, I want to know the better way so we can implement it for everybody, right? And so I learned from customers. I learned from past teammates and current teammates, right? How they're bettering their job, making it easier. And it just got better and better and better. Again, I've been doing this for 17 years. This didn't happen overnight. Like the systems and stuff, you know, I they, they worked and then they sucked and then we made new ones, right? And they just kept getting better and better. And as we failed, we learned from our mistakes, you know? So you do it the right way when you're having a great day. You do it the right way when you're having a crappy day. When you, when you got no sleep and you crawled out the wrong side of the bed and you're just dragging... You, you, you do it the right way, the system. Follow, follow the system. Yep, that's right. And it says, like, we wrapped the doors to our office. So when it comes in, and, and I have a thing right here, right? Here it is. Right here. That's what it's all about, is attitude. So when I teach my guys, this is literally written on my doors. When you walk in through the office, this better be in check. Right. So if you're having a bad day, we want to check on you. We do like the people analyzer from um, what is that from? It's basically traction um, EOS stuff. But anyway, tr um, the people analyzer checks everybody. So each employee, it's anonymous and we rate everybody in the company. So if somebody's having a bad day, I want to like check in on them. Right. Like what's going on, man? You know what I mean? Like, how can I help you? Those kinds of things. But there's culture stuff there that we try to build in as well. So I, I won't get too deep into this. I do want to touch on this because it's relevant. And the people who follow my content, listen to my podcast, they'll come back and they'll be like, bro, Kelfus, you bring up these questions that I wanted to ask, but maybe didn't know how or something. So I believe that a reflection of your, your professional life 
can be a reflection of your personal life. And like mm-hmm. I said, I don't want to go too deep into the content, but I do want to touch on some of us have toxic personal lives or toxic family members or relatives or or just crazy stuff going on that we, we're dealing with maybe during work, after work. And now we got to run this business. And then some people are afraid to grow their business because they're like, I can barely handle my two, three, four employees and, and the family and this stuff going on. It's going to fall apart or I'm going to make promises and break them. So that that's, that's the line between uh, part of my brain. I make this joke to myself that somebody that can grow a huge business, there must be a part of the brain that can compartmentalize this stuff and almost be like a sociopath to completely shut that off and now do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you talk about that for a minute? Yeah, man. It's called alter ego. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you do. And and with sales, you do. When you get in, I don't care what's going on in your head, what's going on personally. If you need to make this sale or not, if you go into that, they're going to see right through you. They're like your two-year-old kid. I don't care what you're going on. They're going to see what the heck is going on. They know, and they're going to push all your buttons, right? So yes, you do have to, you know, things happen all the time, but why is it you know, is it fair for your customer that has no idea what's going on, but paid for your service to deal fair. with all that stuff? That's the best thing. I want to stop you right there. I had this epiphany. Mm-hmm. We have, we've all through, been through ups and downs. And I had a chip on my shoulder for a little bit. I was pissed off in my business. And, and although I was nice to my customers, I didn't mm-hmm. go out of my way. I was a little too, uh, what's the word? Uh, rigid. Mm-hmm. And then I thought about this. I'm like, just because I'm going through shit. It's not fair to my customers. It's not fair to my friends or family member, to my wife or anybody for me to like, I can still practice being nice and communicating. And maybe I have a a friend that I can call up and vent that shit out or talk with or something like, but it's not fair. It's not fair to them. And so, uh, and I was able to cross that boundary because I had a moral dilemma. I'm like, yeah, but I'm really feeling this way. Like, how am I supposed yeah. to go and completely smile to these people and act like nothing's wrong? They're going to be able to see yeah. through it. And then, I'll, then I'm a liar. Then I'm a liar. And it was like this thing that I went through. And when I, I got through it by saying, wait a second, I can be going through something and be stressed out, but still be incredibly nice to a customer because I care about them yeah. because it's a higher moral law. It's like uh, it's a higher level that you ascend through. I won't get too deep into that shit, but yeah. you can navigate through these situations. But how do you do that and transfer that feeling to other people when you have teams of people working? How do you yeah, communicate, so, and transfer that? Yeah, I and I'm a firm believer, man. Like you pour into others, like even though you have it, you give the shirt off your back, right? Like if yeah. you're still struggling and you got things going on, like it's tough because you're going through it. You feel like all alone. Right. And you're like, why? And then sometimes I feel like because you're going through it all alone, you want to take that out on somebody and bring them into your circle and feel like they're a part of it, too. But I think if you pour into others and you see the good and make them smile like that's going to fill your cup more than anything will. Right. Like what's filling your cup? And this goes back to entrepreneurs as a whole. You need to have an accountability circle around you. And have mentors and coaches pouring into your cup. Because if you're pouring your cup into your team and nobody's filling your cup up, you're going to run out. And then there's going to be that breaking moment where you're literally, and I've been there. Don't get me wrong. I've been there multiple times. Like I'm in a ball hyperventilating because it's all on me. You know, but it's not. Pull your team in, right? They care too. And so when we started leveling up our team and I started get breaking through my paradigms that I had, like I was afraid of money. Look, I grew up with nothing. You know, I, my dad was never in the picture. My mom was living off $120 a month and we lived in the largest trailer park in New York. I was afraid to start making money because then I didn't want people to look at me different. Like, oh, money's changed you or, you know, this. No, I, I think money is a reflection of your heart, Right. Because now that we're actually making money and making an EBITDA, right? Like we can pour into our community more than we ever had before. And I used to do houses for free and I used to go wash things for free thinking I was really making an impact because I was washing that house for free. Well, now that we charge, I can go to um, feed the poor. I can go give school books and pencils and all these things now at events 
way more than I could when I was just washing a couple houses for free. Now, don't get me wrong. Washing oh, houses yeah. for free is great. And we still do that for people in need once a month. But now that we're making money, net profit or an EBITDA, right? Now I can start doing bigger things in the community, like really big. And it's awesome to see that. Yeah. Bro, wait, <laughs> you just answered it on a higher level. So at some point or regularly, you must have gotten crystal clear about what your your faith, your mission, your vision is, because it's that faith and that clarity that pulls you through and gives you the reason to not get hung up in your own problems or anxieties or bullshit. Like you can lead, you've learned how to lead yourself because you have clarity. Yeah. Yeah. And a or, lot of things too. How'd you get like, the clarity? You really don't have it that bad. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like there's people that are going through way more shit than you are right now. And you know what I mean? Like we just, we got to just pour into people and that's what it's all about. Like I tell my team all the time, we're here because of our customers, right? So we got to serve them on a high level and we got to keep getting customers and keep the ones we have. So how are we going to do that at a high level? Uh, I was going to say like, well, Okay, no, I had a. So we're still on the packages. We're thanks, still like thanks, rolling man. <laughs> we got a little bit off track, but so w let's roll back to we're not even done with the quote yet, right? So we get our packages and then we go back to the door, right? And then so the customer comes to the door, she's like, great. And I'm like, oh, do you got the company portfolio? She's like, yeah, it's inside. All right, let's go inside. And so you kind of ask to go inside and you want to go inside. You know, if you're doing proposals out, you know, on the on the front deck and stuff like that, how can you get inside where the decisions happen, right? Decisions happen at the at the kitchen table. They write their checks. That's so crazy. I don't go inside of my customer's house until the till it goes north of 10 grand. And I'm like, I don't even want to. I don't want to get stuck at their kitchen table. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and mean, you're bro, saying you want to get in there and close the deal. We do. And the reason being is when you go inside, we I just had a guy that went to sales boost and he said, dude, I was in the house for three hours, three hours, walked away with like a fifty eight hundred dollar check. They paid him before he even did the work because he built the rapport. He filed the system. Right. And so when you're doing those things, your average ticket is going to go through the roof. I just imagine him at the kitchen table and he's got the cat on him and shit. And he's <laughs> left covered in fur. Eight way too many cookies so pissed <laughs> off hey that's a good point though never tell somebody you don't want the water there's science behind it you ever get inside she's like would you like a water keith you're like no no i'm good i just had some don't ever do that say yes say yes i always say no man say yes you know you know why because we had this amazing customer her mm -hmm. with the every, different customers have different nicknames regular clients and they called her gatorade lady man this lady would bring out cold gate she set a little table up outside and she cut avocados and, and snacks for us i got snacks for you. we're doing this huge landscape job and every time we come back and i felt bad because like it's it's okay to say yes to one gatorade but then the second time you say no because then, then you're just drinking all their gatorades it was like but we're talking about just the water here. Are you talking about Robert Cialdini's, Cialdini's uh, influence, persuasion, and persuasion? That That's if somebody it. does something for you, then something psychologically happens unconsciously where now they feel like they want to reciprocate even more. Yes. Yes. That's exactly right. It's down to a science, right? So you want to make sure that you're asking, you know, uh, the right questions and you're also doing the right thing. That's in our 19 points to a sale, right? Accept the water. Accept the cookies. Um, whatever it may be. And so when you're, when you're doing that, you're getting inside, right. And then you're going over the, you're basically going back over the company portfolio. Keith, were you able to go through the company portfolio? You got it right there. Yes. Awesome. Good deal. Were you able to call those people from BMW? No, I didn't think so. Which, which one did you seem like the, that you liked the best? Cause you have the pictures right here. Which, which uh, one would you like to? B. B? Okay, great. Well, let me get him on the phone real quick. So B, oh, that was George. Let me get George on the phone. And you call George for them because they're not going to call. 
You call, hey, George, I'm here with a customer. They actually work at BMW as well. Um, I know we cleaned your house like a month ago. Could you tell her a little bit about, you know, the service and the quality that we had? Oh, yeah, sure, Pat. Okay, here she is. It's Mrs., you know, George. Here you go, bam. Yeah, it's already closed, right? So like, all right, great. So they get off the phone. You're like, all right, so just real quick, I just want to let you know, you know, we've been in business for 17 years. Um, you know, are, how familiar, Keith, are you with our four-step process? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. This is insane. I'm just imagining. Remember the old Amway guys with the blue shoot, blue uh, suit, white shirt, red tie? And they'd come in the house and set up in a board and easel and start showing you the plan to get you to buy into the. No, dude, I don't remember that. Okay, so I did all that shit. I was in network marketing companies, and at 18, bro, I was, well, 18, 19, 20, 21, I was going in people's living rooms and setting up, and they were like, please, please, I don't want, no, no, you got to see this plan. <laughs> and like, I, anyways, it, it got over my fears. of. But I'm laughing because we'll do it. you literally do all this stuff? Yeah. Yep. Fuck. Yeah, man. Yeah. One quote needs to take no less than one hour minimum one hour. I just got uh, one of my close friends who do tree work. I mean, stack them high, let them fly. He'll have 28 quotes in a day. I'm like, that's not even possible. I can't even do it. Like he goes, what do you mean? He shows up mailbox, 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 mailbox. And he puts them all in the mailbox oh, and then so they contact all the customers. The, so much money on the table. But he has such a huge reputation on Facebook and that people already, they could just look it up and they know who he is. And he, I don't know what his close rate is or how mathematic it is. Yeah. But and, and see, so you're saying, so a lot of customers, you get stuck for an extra 25 minutes with them telling you all these stories and talking. I've just have been burned so many times. I'm being honest here where yeah. I've spent so much time with so many customers as the sales guy in my business. And then not even get hired anyways to the point where in, in doing everything within my power, dude, I've read hundreds of books. I'm obsessed with sales and selling. And sometimes at the end of the day, if it just comes down to the pricer, it's not going to work. So you guys must be obsessed with this. We are. We qualify the lead before we even show up. We let them know that it's going to be 45 mm. minutes an hour. And then we want to tell them why we're different, right? Well, are you giving them some type of bar ballpark price that they can somehow get a frame in their head? No. Because if they think it's going to be 800 bucks and you guys are 1600 Yeah, they're going to be like, no, I wanted it done for $350 and it was $6,000. I closed one the other day. I did a Facebook Live and it was it was like $5,500 mm -hmm. that she got a quote for 450 to do pretty much the same stuff for my 5500 so, I mean, you, you're doing this, it's working, you're scaling a huge business, you've got, I mean, it's, you've got it dialed in. So that means that there's a, a preconceived notion in my head, that's an error, that's wrong. There's something that I believe that I'm believing and I've reinforced yeah. through some emotion or frustration that says, how in the hell are you spending this much time with these customers and still closing all these jobs? Yeah. And I, I love it. You're right, though, like in the beginning was I was talking to them a lot. So there's, there is a framework for it for sure, because you can get off and you can talk to them about their puppies and then, you know, all this other stuff, and then they don't buy at the end. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely want to see, look at the process. Right. But with ours, it was like, okay, we weren't winning in the beginning. How can we win? Right. And we would, we would track the numbers, the close ratio, like we're at a 67% close ratio. Right. And we're, we're working towards getting that up, but you don't want to be above a 75 because if you're above a 75% closing ratio, guess what? You got to raise your prices. Boom. So we figured just, out where we want to be. There's, it's not only what you're saying, but it's what you're not saying that you're sub communicating is that you are 100% committed to this process. Yeah. Because when you're committed to something, there is no, yeah, but. That's true. Enough said. Uh, what people are asking in these comments, I want to get some of these comments. Yeah. I like to keep these under an hour, man. This is amazing, and I like my guests to read the comments. So I'll fly through the the quick ones, quick little shout out, and then there's some really good comments. So if you want your comment answered, here we go. 
read it. Say it aloud so people that can't see the video that are listening. Wowzers, maids. Wowzers, maids, present. I like your video at Detroit Sponge. From David Borders. David. Oh, and then Vicky. Okay. From Coast Mesa, California. Costa Mesa. Oh, Coast Mesa. We use the all the oh, we use it all the time. Will it work on siding? Gutter butter. Oh, gutter butter, yes. Yes, it will. Scott Pippen, gutter butter. Yeah. Pat, nice. What's up, Pat? Nice. <laughs> What can you do if you do it or if you don't do on-site quotes? So I recommend doing on-site quotes. Um, like Keith was saying, if you have 26 quotes and you're in a lot of area, you can do some of them over the phone, but try to do most of them in person. Um, if you're doing them over the phone, you can have a call script. Um, and so we don't do a quote unless they're home, period, because mm. we know we're not going to get our 1400 average ticket, right? So we found if you go and they're not home, I can close them over the, over the phone, but my sales team, it's harder for them to close over the phone. And so we even did scripts and stuff like that. So it's harder to do it over the phone. Um, they want to always talk about price. And so, again, do doing those three packages maybe over the phone um, would help. And Vicki Wowser says, 97% of my quotes are done without being present. For house cleaning, window cleaning, and pressure washing, we use Google Earth if we need to see a property. Nice. Yeah. So I would say you're leaving money on the table for sure. Um, just because Google Earth isn't going to show you everything and you can go out there. You know, um, we always measure everything because the neighbors watch. Another thing we do, Vicky, is every quote we do, my, my territory manager walks next door and he has to get another quote. We replicate it. Our average uh, marketing budget is like 8.6% because we do this. <sighs> And you got to be in a wrap vehicle. And we we network on the way in, the way out. There's a whole process. There's a marketing. We call it Goya marketing on the way in. Get off your ass marketing. That was uh, in conjunction uh, with the sale. Quick for some clarity if some of you guys watching uh, get triggered. Like, how the hell is he doing all this? Again, you've got sales guys where that's their whole job is to sell stuff all day. Correct. Right? They only do five quotes in a day. That's it. Max. Okay. And they're also not doing the production. They're not working in the office. They're not managing payroll. They're not doing right. all the other things that as a stage one business or a chuck in a trucker, if if, if you're pulling your hair out and you've got to get back to the job, so you got to the materials blah, 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 and the phone's ringing the whole time and you got all the shit going on. Yeah. So, but, but what I also want to draw clarity and distinction from and to is if you apply a percentage of what Pat's talking about and you, you absorb it into your consciousness and it'll automatically, if you start, it'll move you upstream. It's like better some than none at all. And then one day you can get to that point. Like wh where's sales boost? When's the next one? Where was the last one? How much does it cost? People are asking about this. Yeah. So we do it once a year. It's once a year. We did it at the Spartanburg Marriott. It's 1297. Uh, so 1297. Another little thing you want to do, guys, when you're presenting your price, never say $1,297. Seems really high, doesn't it? It's 1297. For only 1297, you get three days. Uh, one day is on site. We go out in the in the field. We took 56. We had two uh, 56 passenger buses. Unfortunately, this year the second one didn't show up, so that was a whole thing. But uh, we go out on site and we do the quotes. So we show you how to do the quotes, how to measure them, how to do them. And then day three Wait, is real customers' houses. Yeah. Yeah. So well, we if I was getting a quote at my house and a two bus showed up, two buses, and a bunch of people came out. And you know, if my ass was there, I'd be videotaping. That's right. Yeah, so, no. So we do tell everybody not to videotape. Um, we don't tell the customers that we're really coming out. We just tell them, hey, we have our branches from all over. We're doing a little training camp. Is it okay if we have a couple people come out? And then we show up with 56. We do break them up into groups. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Sign them up right there. Sign them up. Show you how to close them right then and there. All right, I'll go through some of these. YMG Landscaping LLC. Hello there from Pennsylvania. What up, though? That's my thing. What up, though? Scott Pippen says, this is amazing info. It is. Uh, Jake Kane says, Kelfis, you're the man. I have work for my company sent. It's 12 years old. I'm 22, and I mow 10 lawns on Sunday and work six. Dude. Days a week, 65 hours for the week. That's awesome, bro. I love it. 
And thank you. Yeah. Thanks for subscribing. Daniel Tuff, how much for the program? Twelve ninety seven for sales boost, right? Yeah. Patclark.com. Yep. I wasn't planning on pitching any of your stuff, but it's so good. People are already asking how much for the program. Michael says it's better to hire someone who knows nothing with a good attitude than and willing to learn than the guy that can't be told anything. Yeah, and they can learn your system. So it's tough because your first sales guy, I call them territory managers because we give them a protected territory. And so I, I'm, I'm tossed up on that. You don't want somebody that wants $100,000 and put them in a $50,000 territory. Everybody has a number in between their eyes, right? What they want to make. You have to find out what that number is in between their eyes and put them in a territory that they're willing to work in. And so we've actually changed our territories over the years to fit that territory manager or TSM, right? Territory sales manager. And so um, I've hired guys that know nothing, right? That follow the system and do really well. But I've also hired people that don't know anything. And unfortunately, they didn't work out, right? So you want to find somebody that is in that sales, that's local, that has a million stories, knows the area really well, and knows a lot of people. Because when you hire them, hey, by the way, I want you to go and quote six of your friends' houses, because what, what does that do? It pays for your training. So they're going to go quote six of their houses. We already know on average nationwide is 50% close ratio. They just close three jobs and it gets their yeah. wheel turned. So there's a whole science behind the thing, um, you know, in training and stuff. It sounds to me the role that you play in your business is, is it like, what's your favorite role? What, what, is, what do you specialize in? Me? Yeah. Oh, dude, it's sales. I knew you were going to say that. I just wanted to. Yeah. So, so what about the visionary integrator relationship? Like Gino Wickman talks in the book, traction, rocket fuel, and get a grip. Where do you play into that? Yeah. So I'm more, I'm definitely the visionary, right? I'm growing, I'm growing the locations. I'm out of the day to day. I'm growing more locations and I do commercial sales. So I actually just last week closed 380,000. That's a lot. Good for you, bro. I love it. Okay, let's say uh, Kurt Bryant says, my wife tells me I have a mental box system that everything files into. When I am not busy, I go through the boxes and sort them out and deal with the stuff. It helps me to separate my issues from my business issues. Nice. So Kurt's probably a high C on the disc profile. Yeah. Kurt, Kurt's a C. Um, What's that? Calculated. So if you look at disc, right, you want to know, and this go, plays into sales. There's D, which is somebody that just gets it done. They're like, I don't care the price. Let's get it done. And I, which I'm an IS. So an I is somebody who wants to talk about themselves, right? They're like the party guy. Um, that's an I. So if you get there, he's like, dude, talking about his car and the customer's all, you know, talking about him. You want to talk to, about him. So that's an I. And then you have an, uh, an S and a C. And the S is somebody like... If you're walking through the mall and you're like, hey, would you like to try out this thing? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll come right back. I'll be. They're not coming back. They're sensitive. They don't want to hurt your feelings. They're like, oh, that sounds really good, Keith. I like how you're going to do the hedges. We're gonna, I'm going to talk to my husband tonight. We're going to give you a call. We're definitely going to get it done. And you're like, why the heck didn't I close that freaking job? She said she was going to close. She's an ass. She didn't want to, She didn't want to tell you you forgot to put the breath in. You didn't quote the thing that she really wanted in the backyard, right? That's an S. And then you have your C people who are, I want to know exactly which folder this goes into. And I want to know exactly how you're going to do it, where your truck's going to park. Like, how much is it going to be? Can I make payments? That's a C. And you need to know who these people are when you're selling to them. Because if you sell a C and he's a D, you, he's like, get the heck out of here. I just want the price and get it done. You're, you talk yourself out of the sale. Bro, so, this has never happened before. Last summer, I gave uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of quotes. This one quote was this lady. It was like, I read about five grand. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, yes, 100%, let's do it, wants to do it. She just got to talk to her husband, get right back with me. And I'm like, I got the quote sent over, made a yeah. couple adjustments. It's in. We're going to do it two weeks from now on a Tuesday. And we got a whole bunch of other jobs going on. But I didn't get the signature back. I, I So I emailed, hey, what's going on? Just make sure everything ghosted nothing i wait another 24 hours i follow up again i'm like what the hell's going on maybe something happened i wait till monday nothing so i give it three more days i follow up again now i'm like i feel what the, what the hell did i do something wrong like so I, and then it's totally just ghosted and then you just clarified it some people just 
they don't even want to deal with it. They're afraid to tell you no. That's right. right. And it's so like, if I have, so this is a disc profile analysis, right? Correct. I've and never thought of to, taking this for analyzing that. customers. Yes. And we know how to use, follow up on an S. And there's a certain way to follow up on an S. And you can't be too blunt or else they're never, they're, you're ghosted. You're gone. Because I got this, these other, who this other customer is calling every day wanting an update about what it's going to be and with a quote and what type of shrubs are we going to use? Are you sure we can get it from here? And I'm like, Jesus, I don't even know. But the job's like 6,500 bucks. And I'm yep. like, and then they want to know every single detail. And so what, who would I be dealing with then? Yeah. Is a C. Is a C. Calculated. calculated. Now I don't have my wallet on me, but I literally have a disc card in my wallet. My wife is a C. She wants to know how we're going to do it. She wants to know all the details. I'm not a C. I'm an I. I'm like, I'm just like. So an I again is what? What's that? What's I? I is like, um, uh, shoot, you're going to have to look it up. I don't know the exact okay. thing for I, but they're outgoing. Yeah. They're like the life of the party. Like that's an I. Inspirational, you know. You have a lot of I in you too, but you also have C and you're probably like an I C S is what I'm the, I, the overthinker over analyzer. Yeah. But you're still an I cause you're, you're, you get out there and you're, you're inspirational. You know what I mean? So, but what, I, what I'm getting to is you need to know those people and then you need to have checklist for a C person. You need to have a checklist for an S person. So if they're a C person, Hey guys, in my CRM, I'm marking down they're a C person. So now what's my staff know? Okay, great. We're going to send out an email on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're going to give her updates throughout. And she's already updated. Guess what her happiness level is going up? And she's going to pay you double. She's going to pay you double because she's more difficult. Yep. So we would create lists for those type of, type of people. So if we know she's a C, she wants to know what shrubs, where we're going to get them from. Your office is updating them. Bam, bam. And by the way, before everything happens, she's getting a, a butt a, a bullet point list of what's been done, what's about to be done. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> yes, sir. Dude, that's straight up gold. So like you lean into it and serve them at a higher level. And guess what? You got a customer for life and she's going to pay you more next time. You. So I was just like, I'm just narrowing my shit and just dealing with the, it's all about serving customers at a high level. Okay. So, uh, Brett Jones, what's up, landscaping fam? Big shout out from Texas. Nice. Love watching your videos. Thank you so much. Scott Pippen says, Team of Destiny, lol. That's exactly the network, the marketing company I was in. It was called Team of Destiny, bro. Nice. I had real cassette motivational tapes. I still got some. I saved <laughs> I do. I do too. What's up, Scott Jennings? Shout out couple more and we're about to end this kurt bryant nice pb's lawn care danny haddad awesome all right we're gonna wrap this up everybody where can you uh patrick clark where can everybody find you again yes sir so facebook um and then patclark.com uh to look at my you know different resources and stuff instagram just look up the real pat clark um, I'm on there, but all the social media, LinkedIn, I'm there. Um, so reach out. And if you guys have any more questions, um, love to love to chat, man. I love it. Patrick Clark, Sales Boost, patclark.com. Check out his live events. They sell out if you want to go and, <laughs> dude, it'll change your whole game. Just real quick, uh, thanks for hanging out and listening and joining us on the Untrapped Podcast. If, for those of you... Sorry, I'm so amped up right now that I like literally have to slow <laughs> down so I can talk. Uh, like after this, we're having on Dan Plata. We've had Paul Jamison on. You can go back and listen to the uh, older episodes. Uh, Aaron Parker. We've had David Carroll on. We've had Corey Ballard. Freaking. We just had Joshua Latimer on. We had Tommy Mello last week. And I'm just saying, this might have been your best one, though. Just saying. <laughs> well, there. 
the, dude, the amount of knowledge that you dropped, it was literally the most amount of golden nuggets in a row that we've had on this show so far. That's what we do. That's what I'm going to promote the hell out of the show. We might even write a 2,500 word blog article and email it to our list of 15,000 people from this show. So Let's thank you. Go. And I'm going to be out there, dude. I'm going to be coming and do a sales boost on site at your thing. We got to video it and I'll go do sales for you. Never sold landscaping ever, but we're going to sell a ton of it. You're going to be selling shit we don't even know how to do. Bro, I just sold a $100,000 luxury outdoor living space with the patio, the waterfall. Now I'm going to have to go subcontract somebody. We'll get the underdecking done. We're doing it all. I mean, we're... <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. Later, guys. See ya.